Contributors, a total of 150,000. That uh, the total expenditures to date have been 107, 897, which is made up of the consultant study of 100,000 and legal fees, and then other incidental items. We have a balance of 42,102 dollars. Okay, thank you. Uh, and and uh, there are more copies in the front desk. Uh, there's not enough. For copies up there, so please get one if you want to, uh, and if any of you have questions about it, we'll be happy to try to answer those as well. Uh, with that, I'm going to uh, sort of change the... Uh, Madam Chair, sure, if, if you don't mind, uh, oh, could, right. we get a, could we get a motion to approve the minutes so that we'll have that in Second. the record? Yeah, we <laughs> are we going to do that in the back of the other day? It's okay. Let's put it on the table. The minutes, all of the members have them. Uh, we have a motion on the second. Any additions or corrections? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. If we do the same on the financial report. Okay, we make a motion to accept the financial report. Move. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that takes care of it. If necessary, I ask you to first today. Um, the next thing, we're going to change the order a little bit because the Chancellor from uh, the University of Arkansas, Little Rock, and the Chancellor from the University of Arkansas, Medical Sciences has asked to have a few minutes to address both the audience and the board. So I'm going to call on them, and uh, they're sitting right here at the front, and I believe uh, Dr. Monk, you were going to go first, is that correct? Okay. Yeah. I think he's got it. Yeah, and it's, Great. it's, it's hard. Great. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair.
Thomas neighborhood and other initiatives involving the same area, same, same neighborhoods, same individuals. And we, UMS, should be contributing partners to this overall agenda. As Chancellor, I'd like to reiterate UMS's support for a research park as an important asset for economic development in support of commercialization of new knowledge created locally and specifically in our case at UMS. Our research today has resulted in the creation of approximately 60 companies, half of which are operating right now with new discoveries each year that have commercial potential. And the ability to develop these ideas here at Little Rock and the potential for job creation is real and is very important. Having said that, recently I've received multiple letters and emails from stakeholders who live in one or another of the targeted areas that have been shared publicly um, and are under exploration by the board as potential locations for the park. And I personally have driven through these areas and I've been able to see firsthand that while there are homes and houses in disrepair in this region, there are many, many more homes that are well cared for and are under occupied. This is a long-range initiative that has a significant potential in the future for Little Rock, for Arkansas, for our institutions. What I'd like to ask is that the board balance this attention to the long-range economic development goals with equal attention to the social impact on residents and families and a joint shared vision for community development that includes both the economic development goals and the community development goals be advanced. Individuals and families should not be harmed as a consequence of this initiative. In fact, the economic development potential coupled with attention to neighborhood development should be synergistic. These two goals should not be in opposition to each other. They should be mutually interdependent and supportive of each other. I ask that you find the proper way to involve community stakeholders as engaged partners before this process goes further. Perhaps through the creation of a community advisory committee or another venue or another vehicle that you would select. The idea of driving time from the research campuses has been presented as an important determinant of future success of the research arm. I believe this is proving to be a stumbling block at the present time. From our perspective, adherence to the close proximity to the campuses should not take priority over the interests of individuals, families, and the community. I'd also like to ask that the board consider the circumstances under which alternative locations and alternatives regarding scale of projects would be considered. That's really all I have for this afternoon.
and 2000, the area of the city within approximately a 20 block radius of UAR had lost 29% of its population, which was accompanied by a decline in housing stock, parks, streets, schools, safety, and retail businesses. So the University of Omaha received this resolved more strongly to work in partnership with people and organizations in our neighborhoods to revitalize our part of the city. To that end, we led in establishing the University Partner University District Partnership and invested our time, talent, and treasure in the variety of rebuilding initiatives. Now, it's with that background that I say that at the University of Arkansas Little Rock, we believe that a technology park would be good for Central Little Rock. It would be a big step into a brighter future with 21st century businesses and jobs nearby. The jobs would on average be better paying jobs. But those big businesses would need workers all along the skill spectrum, from those who clean buildings and maintain grounds to persons out of two-year technical programs to PhDs producing cancer treatments, achieving tissue and bone regeneration, and alternative forms of energy. Such businesses could put Little Rock, particularly our part of the city, even more prominently on the world map. I am glad that the plan that has been put forth for the Tech Park is not put it out on the western edge of our city. People in our area have often felt neglected in terms of city investment, and the Tech Park would represent a major city investment, unprecedented, I believe, in the neighborhood south of I 630. Moreover, Tech Parks also draw private investment into an area. Frankly, it's hard to think of another project of such potential benefit that is likely to be considered for our part of the city. And the magnets that draw this development to this area are the research universities. And if for some reason we miss this significant opportunity, we're likely to wait a long time for the next one. We recently had a lot of instant experts on the location of tech parks. A lot of us have gotten into that in conversations. The reality is that almost no one in Little Rock can claim to be such an authority. That's why you seek the assistance of qualified consultants. Location of the tech park matters. It matters to homeowners that may be affected, and that's an important consideration. A tech park will change many lives in the short run as this board requires property and relocates residents and businesses from whatever site is chosen. These residents and businesses are our neighbors and our students and our faculty and our staff, as well as your friends. It's essential that these persons not bear a disproportionate or undue hardship because of this project. Location matters. It matters to a business and indeed it matters to a technology park. We should not assume that a tech park could be located just anywhere that someone sees a sparsely populated area or an empty big box retail store. If you try to develop a tech park in the wrong place, it will fail. And as a city, we cannot afford to invest millions of dollars in a tech park in the wrong place. So the people of this city are depending on this board to make a wise selection. I wish to offer three main recommendations that I believe would make the process of science selection more comfortable and the end result more widely acceptable. First, regarding the selection of site, I recommend that you proceed with the evaluation of the three sites that were identified by angle technology and go on and narrow the choice to one of them. But at the same time, invite interested parties to make a case for other potential locations. I would suggest a window of perhaps three months for such submissions. Then evaluate those additional nominations. Here's the rationale. Completing the evaluation of the first three potential sites and narrowing them to one will provide a baseline, a body of information that will help everyone understand the kind of analysis and thinking that goes into the selection of a suitable site. This will be educational and helpful uh, to all of us and will, I believe, result in much more comfort with acceptance of the final choice. 
And while there is a substantial case to be made for locating the tech park within close proximity to the universities, we are willing to forego strict adherence to the fine and grind criteria. This sense, however, is not irrelevant, and the board will need to evaluate the feasibility of any proposed sites um, beyond that distance. Second, once a site is chosen, it is likely that a surprising number of owners who will be displaced will be ready to sell. Others will take longer, but will end up with what they regard as a reasonable resolution. And the number who find no offer acceptable will be very few. And in the process, everyone will have been treated respectfully and, sens and uh, with sensitivity. And I predict that uh, I just outlined what will in fact happen. But right now, people do not know that. Therefore, I recommend that you go ahead and soon communicate in detail how the process will unfold during the property acquisition phase. This is not uh, this is not a time to hold the cards close to your vest. And without those concrete details, the unknown about the process gives rise to many unnecessary and understandable concerns and fears based on feelings uh, rather than on facts. To that end, I suggest that you put a task force in place that includes a member or two from the board, plus representatives of the neighborhoods, and a lot of agencies like the City Housing Authority and the Land Bank, and other public uh, and private uh, organizations that have expertise and interest uh, in these issues. Their input and resources will be very helpful. And then third, you've already made or committed to make uh, personal financial disclosures. And I recommend that beyond that, you adopt uh, the following resolution affirming a, that you will make every effort to give fair and equitable treatment to all involved, taking account, account of the human costs. B, that you will establish a committee or some mechanism with neighborhood representation, as I described just a moment ago, to develop a coordinated approach for addressing the human issues that will affect our friends and neighbors during the property acquisition phase. And C, that you will make every effort to acquire needed property through agreement and with the exercise of eminent domain only as a last resort. My own opinion is that you would, in time, uh, have taken all of those steps. You would take all of these steps. Nonetheless, I think it would be helpful if you actually affirmed them uh, through a board resolution. I believe the several steps I have urged will help us end up with that part that is out of the rock and not just in the rock, one that is well conditioned in our community. I would add, finally, that we at the University of Arkansas of the Rock stand ready to offer assistance. Our Institute of Government can provide research and analysis on a wide range of important issues. Our communications office can help with a communication plan for the board, and we can help in other ways. Thank you for the opportunity to address you on this significant community issue. Thank you. 
obviously hearing from uh, people from throughout the community, not only within the area that we're looking at. Obviously, certainty and, and what the process is going to be is, is something that's important, but I also believe that we have an opportunity with existing resources, and Chancellor Anderson touched on this with regard to creating a committee that would include folks from the neighborhood, uh, folks from this board, folks from the resources that are available in terms of better housing, whether that be the city home uh, situation and department, whether that's the land bank, whether that's the housing authority, any state, federal, or local resources that currently exist in this community or could exist in this community, along with nonprofit opportunities like Habitat for Humanity. I, I would like to see uh, us act upon, and maybe we do that in the format that the Chancellor recommended, but act upon a format where we can create a committee to begin assembling all of those resources uh, and the neighborhood representatives in, in uh, one room and begin to look at marshalling those resources to provide for better housing opportunities for everyone, whether or not you're involved in this process uh, with regard to where the tech park will finally end, but get community engagement and also show what resources are available that we can help marshal to provide better housing, both owner-occupied as well as rent housing within that entire area. So uh, I, I'm not going to make that in the form of a motion given that the Chancellor has made that as part of his recommendation, but I, I think that would be a great next step in not only communicating with the neighborhoods, involving the neighborhoods, but also uh, putting together a framework so that all these resources are shown to the folks in the neighborhoods uh, and we try to make that entire area of our community a better place, not just one specific area where a tech park might go. Thank you, Jay, very much. Uh, we will, what we will need to do before the end of the meeting today is to discuss uh, how we want to proceed uh, and how we're going to put together uh, a few people to talk about how to make some of these things happen or not, okay? Uh, one of the issues that we have talked about in the past is that many of the issues that you want to talk about depend on the site you choose. And so one of the real uncertainties, and I do understand the uncertainty within the communities, uh, the big thing is they don't know where it's going to go and they don't know who's going to be affected. So it seems to me that one of our uh, real objectives should also be to try to get to a conclusion uh, as quickly as is feasible with proper oversight of what that is. And then we can take all of these things into consideration and deal with it in a way that really makes sense. But uh, it really, if you look at the, uh, these sites, three sites are quite different. Uh, if you look at sites outside of that, they will be quite different. And so the things that you will want to do within the community is going to depend greatly on which of the sites you pick. So I think one of the things we need to do is to move as expeditiously as we can and get the uncertainty off the table. I think that is as big an issue in the community, frankly, as anything else. Because many of them, and I understand that this is a dreadful thing to be, they're kind of a whole because they don't know what the decision is going to be, they don't know who's going to be affected. Uh, and so we will make an effort to talk about how we expedite that part of the, of the process so that we can move on. And in one of those, uh, the, if you look at the financial uh, sheets that uh, are there, you notice that the biggest expenditure was for this uh, uh, outside consulting group, Angle Technology, who came and spent quite a lot of time. I don't remember, Jay, do you remember how long they were in the city? It was a couple of months or so. It was quite a, quite a long time. And they looked at these uh, uh, areas and they looked at the whole city and they did consider other uh, possibilities in addition to the three sites that they finally recommended. And one of the members of that team, we had asked back as a consultant to help us because uh, he knows an awful lot of the background. And so I'm going to ask Charles D. Dilts, if he would, to introduce himself and give us a little, give you all a little bit of his background because he is going to be helping us with some of these issues that we're just talking about. Charlie, would you like to stand up and give us a, a, a resume, please? <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to uh, 
be here in front of the board and uh, be made friends again. Um, just so you know, I'm a fact teacher in the building of Central Parks for the Lake and the Inn for almost 50 years. Uh, starting out uh, building a research park in Philadelphia uh, with an organization that included the University of Pennsylvania and our soul temple and the other institutions in that area. That park uh, is now over a couple million square feet of space, has started over 400 companies, uh, has a number of very exciting new uh, companies, but also some big, some small, one of which by the way, this is one of my new I retired from the Science Center a few years ago, and, uh, 10 years ago. Started on the solar company. I was a part of the annual team that came here as a result of that. Uh, I spent most of my time again as a practitioner. I lived uh, working with a group that is developing nine other research parks around this country, including the University of Miami, uh, Illinois, uh, Chicago, Illinois, and St. Louis, uh, Wake Forest University, all of which are in the most cities, all of which are related to the universities, on the grants, community grants, all of the most of which are also involved in the medical schools. Uh, so that's a little bit about my background. I'm here again to catch up, learn, spend three years or so since I was here. This is my first day back, so I am in the process of sorting a lot of information and learning about what's happening here. And glad to be back. Thank you very much. Uh, we believe that Mr. Nix is going to be a big help in actually looking at all of these things because he does have the background and the expertise as to what is necessary for a park to be successful. So we're very pleased to have him help us and he actually has had all the questions that have been raised today by the chancellors in the parks that he's been involved in. All of those questions were there and people had to deal with them. So he can help us with that side of the equation as well. So we are very pleased to be here, so thank you very much. Uh, I, the next item on our agenda is I, I think that the board voluntarily all have decided to, and I believe that actually, I think there are many everybody has actually posted their financial statement and conflict of interest statement. So they are up on the website uh, and they are on the uh, Secretary of State's website. So you can put them on the city's I, I, Mine, I turned into the city. I'm not sure. I found mine at the, at the county. At the county? Okay. County. Okay. County clerk. County clerk. Yeah. County clerk's okay. Uh, but anyway, they are not available. And uh, so for those of you who have an interest in those, can get a look at them. Uh, the best that we can assess, we really don't have people with um, separate agendas, nor do we have people who have conflict of interest at the moment. But that's for you all to read and decide on yourselves whether that's true or not. But they're up now and you can take a look at them. The other thing is we did receive several uh, FOIA's uh, freedom of information requests, and I believe we have answered all of those. Uh, in fact, I believe there were at least one person uh, going through the papers that I had anyway today uh, in my office. So I think that we have uh, complied with all of the freedom of information uh, requests that were made. So uh, those of you who've had an opportunity to uh, look at the files and uh, the people who have looked at them, have them almost everything is actually up on the website, but not perhaps everything. So you may also that's what saying or not, but they were all under the FOIA and they're all available for people to look at. Uh, the uh, next thing that I want to do to be sure is we need to establish a bank account. The authority does not have an official bank account. And uh, the recommendation that we have is that uh, we will use the, um, uh, gosh, you find my paper. It's here. Uh, is that we will use Regents Bank uh, and then we'll have a, um, an account that just leaves the Little Rock Technology Park Authority. And uh, we will move on to uh, put that in place so that we have an official bank account. And I'm assuming, uh, Jay, that the 42000 that's left here would go into that account, right? That's correct, Madam Chair. What we would need to do is pass a resolution authorizing that and authorizing that. 
any two of the four board officers would be official signers, uh, that you would need two signatures as that resolution states to, um, to actually spend any of the authority's money, if that resolution covers all of that. So we need official action in terms of a motion and a second and a vote to uh, be able to establish. And I believe the copies on this uh, document as well in the package over there on the thing. Yes, ma'am. So if you want to look at it, uh, it is simply an authorization for a corporation or partnership association uh, to utilize a deposit on fee-based services and it will be with Regions Bank and it will be just the Florida Technology Park of Florida, which means that it will be accessible only by this board. It will not be accessible by any other entity, okay? So I think people want to know that for sure, and that will be the case. So, Jay, you want to make a resolution? And so moved. Do that second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, the motion carried. So we can establish that, and the 42,000, that's the bottom of the line on the financial statement you saw, will be the first deposit. Any two of the four board officers for the resolution. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Madam Chair, in addition, I wanted to uh, advise the board that we're in the process of invoicing the three sponsors and Children's Hospital, uh, which is a uh, participant financially but not a sponsor, for uh, their second installment. Uh, each. Uh, that is, uh, I believe that everybody has had information about that, that the drawdown from the sponsors is a $25,000 per year. Uh, I think that's no, there's, there's, there's not an There's no schedule, okay. but it's in $25,000 installments. installments. And we will ask to have the next installment of that done because we're going to end up with some bills to the <laughs> engineers next so very, very shortly. So, uh, and that will at least have an operating budget uh, and, a, and a place where that money goes and we'll be in a position to handle our business. 